Hey, what is going on YouTube? Medcore Games here today with a deck profile for sub -terrors. Um I will say that this deck isn't fully complete as to the extra deck. I don't have a full extra deck because there's not really a lot of things in the extra deck you actually use. I just kind of put in the things that I did occasionally summon, but not very frequently. But these these are things you actually can make. So if you don't if you're not aware, sub -terrors are a flip summon deck that when they're flipped face up, they get to trigger their effects which they are incredibly powerful and they are big beat sticks so let's start off three ultra mafis this guy is the best monster well one of the best monsters they have um when it's flipped you can change all of the face up monsters in the field to face down defense position so it's just really good and he's a 3k beat stick that attack is massive uh honestly he's probably my well he's my favorite monster of the deck by far that's why he's a three He's definitely one of the best ones, for sure. We have Speleologist. Uh, you target a face up, well, you target one monster in the field, change it to face up attack position, if it's in defense position, and change its attack to zero. So, he can make a big monster, literally nothing, as long as it was in defense, of course. So, he's he's a one of because it's it's chainable off of Ultramorphous. Like, if you attack into something that's got a lot of defense, you can use Speleologist to make that attack zero, and well, switch it to attack, and then make its attack zero. But you don't really ever use this card that much. That's why it's a one of. I mean, he's still a 3K beat stick, just like Ultra. So he's worth having for the damage, but he's not really the strongest monster of the uh, sub terrors. So he's not that important. Two Stalagmo. You can discard a sub terror, and if you do draw two cards, you could actually take out this guy and actually put in a third uh, Stalagmo, just because he's that good. I mean, he's he's basically the draw power of the deck, so I'm yeah, I'm gonna put him up to three instead of having the uh, Speleologist. So we'll have this guy in at three. Uh, two Umastrix. This gets to banish monsters your opponent controls, so really, really good as well. Really strong, solid card to have. And then three, well then, sorry, two, Stigio Kraken. This destroys set cards in the field equal to the number of sub terror behemoth monsters you control. So th they have to be face up. He counts for himself, so if you have Ultra face up and him face up, that's two. If you have Stalagmo face up, Umastrix face up along with Ultra and Stigio, that's four. So be careful on what you're destroying because you have to destroy equal number of the sub terror behemoths you have. So you do have to be careful about that. But for the majority of the time, you're only going to be popping one or two at a time. You can go for more, but you, you just make sure that you control what you have set and not overdo Stigio Kraken's effect when you use him. Then we have three Guru. Uh, when it's flipped, you can add a sub terror monster from a deck to your hand, so it is a searcher. On top of that, you can target one of their face up monsters in the field and change both both it and this card to face down defense position. It can be activated during either player's turn if you control a su another sub terror card. So if you have sub terror cave clash, you can use Guru to set itself and another card in your opponent's turn and just make things really annoying. So we have two mid shield Gardner. Uh, the sole purpose is for this to set itself. Now, that's a key mechanic. If the only monster you have face up is set, while well, you control another face up monsters. Well, so, sorry. If a face up monster you control is set, while well, you control another face up monsters, all these sub terror behemoths will special summon themselves, which you can special summon and then use their effects to reset themselves. So. You can use Mitchell Garner to set itself, Ultra Mophis gets to summon itself, then it gets to set itself, in which then, when it's attacked, it flips, the effect goes off, whatnot. Same with Stalagmo, same with Umastrix, and same with Stagio Kraken. They all have the same summon effect when a monster you control is set while you control another face of cards. Well, face up monsters. Then we have three Ash Blossom just to stop the searching the other decks do. 3 Flip Flop Frog for the same purpose as the Mid Shield Gardener. 3 Sub Terra Phoenix. This card is ridiculously good. 
Uh, if your opponent activates a card or effect, you can send this card from your hand or field to the graveyard and target a sub terra monster you control and negate the activation. Then change the targeted monster to face down defense position. So that is really good. And then you can target one face down monster you control and change it to face down defense position. And if you do, special one sub terra monster from your hand or graveyard and face up or face down defense position. So th this is its active monster. Well, that's the active monster effect. So if you have this card summoned to the board, target face up monster you control, set it, and then special summon a sub terror from your hand or graveyard. So it's really good recyclability. And then with this card still on the field, you'll be able to use its negation effect to send it to the grave to be able to negate a card effect and set a sub terror card you have as face up. It's a hand trap. It's also a it's also a board trap. It's really really strong and definitely one of the best cards in the deck. Three instant fusion for the purpose of getting out invoked Raijin for the purpose of setting Raijin to trigger these sub terror monsters effects. Also, with Raijin set, it will not be destroyed by instant fusion, so you'll be able to next turn flip this card face up again and be able to use its effect and set cards your opponent controls or even you control to re use the effects to summon your monsters and just get plays done. So really, really good card in this deck. It's a good trigger for your effects. At the cost of a thousand life points and getting a Raijin out, I think it's completely worth it to have, honestly. Uh, Raigeki for board wipes, pretty standard. Uh, Rota, it searches out the Mitchell Gardner, so it's really nice. And then Triple Terraforming, really good card as well. Searches out your field spell, which is mandatory in this deck. Uh, Subterra Cave Clash. When you inflict battle damage with a Subterra monster, you can target a Subterra card in your graveyard, except Cave Clash and out to your hand. I'm considering bumping this to 3 and putting Instant Fusion down to 2, just because you want to recycle this as much as possible. And if you see this card, I mean, your Subterras get massive attack for each set card in the field. So Ultra Mathis, effect goes off, sets things. Ultra Mathis can be like 6k attack, 7k attack. It can get ridiculously big. And then if your opponent has a face, like, if, then when you flip a uh, Umastrix, well, sorry, if you were to have the uh, other one, the other level, well, if you had the level 11 one, you'd be able to change that monster to attack position, and then you'd be able to just do a shitload of damage with Ultra Mathis, but it's not really necessary. It doesn't happen often. But it was something that you could do. Three Hidden City. Uh, this is the best card in the deck. Well, one of the best cards in the deck by far. When it's activated, you can search a Subterra monster. So that's good. And then you can change one face down, defense position, Subterra monster to face up, attack, or defense position. So that will trigger their flip effect. And then when your opponent's monster declares an attack, you can change one face down, defense position, Subterra monster to face up, attack, or defense. Then you can negate the attack. So if you have Ultra Mafia set and you have this, your opponent attacks you, you go ahead and activate Hidden City, flip Ultra Mafia, negate the attack, then Ultra Mafia's effect will go off, you will set everything on the board, and then basically on your next turn, you just wipe their board out. That's essentially how this deck kind of resolves around Hidden City. And then this card, it'll work in the same way, sub to our final battle. Um, it has three various effects, but you can only use one a turn. So after activating it, it will reset itself. So this card will continuously use itself and set itself, which is really nice. So you can change one set sub terror monster to face up attack or defense position. Change one face up sub terror on the field to face down. Or the attack and defense of a sub terror monster on the field become equal to the combined original attack and defense until the end of the turn. Also, or you can make the effects of sub terror cards. Uh, unable to be negated. So it's, it has four incredibly powerful effects. All are really useful for this deck and it's just super good. So this card is really nice and it resets itself. So this card is an absolute 3 up because it's so good. You can make all your sub terrors huge beat sticks. You can make Ultra Mafia a 4800. You can make Stalagmo a 4900. I mean just the, the pure power that you can get out of these monsters with this card is ridiculous. Like you can make Umastrix of 4700, you can make Stalagmo 4000, you can even make, well you can even make Guru a 3200. So, well sorry, 3400. 
there is just a lot of power potential from this deck that a lot of people seem to misunderstand. So on the extra deck, we are running two Raijin, um, pretty much for your main instant fusion targets, but if you need to, you can go Thousand Eyes Restrict, and then just equip something to it, and then at the end of the turn, they both will just be destroyed. So really, really good. Um, one Starfire Mortal Omega. I've made it before using Stygial Kraken and Ash, just because I really felt like I could have just done it, and it sounded fun. So I blew out their back row with Stagio Kraken, and then I made Omega, and just was awesome. You can also make Black Rose with Guru and Ash. It doesn't come up very often that you do it, like when you actually do make that play, but it's it's there, it's potential, it's an option. Um, I have made Toad before with the two flip-flop like with two flip-flop frogs. Because you really only need to trigger their effects once to really get the deck going and to get your monsters positioned. And then from there you just kinda take over and win. But Toad, I've made Toad once. You can also make Centuria with them as well. Um, but Subterra Behemoth Fiendus is really good. So it requires two flip monsters to link summon this, but it gains attack equal to combined original levels of Subterra monsters used for its link times 100. So yeah, its base attack is 2000, and then it will gain 100 times the levels of the Subterra is used. So you can get Behemoth Fiendus really, really big, which is nice. And then you can send one flip monster from your deck to the graveyard and add one. Uh, and if you do, especially summon one monster from your hand in face down defense to your zone this card points to. So it can get monsters out of your hand as well as set a play up for your graveyard. So you can set a, like you can send a guru, you can send like an ultra, you can send stalagma or whatever. And then you can get them back with uh, Fiendus. Wait, is it Fiendus? Oh no, you can get them back with Cave Clash. So it can set up the graveyard plays for Cave Clash, which is nice. And then if a monster this card points to is flip face up, you can add a flip monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. So you can set up your graveyard with cards you want to get to your hand really easily with Fiendus. So this is, this is a really good link monster to make. Um, it's really, really good, and honestly, it's probably one of the best cards that the deck has. And then one misses Radiant. I've made this before. It makes all your monsters a lot bigger because all your monsters are Earth. Well, all the all the subterrors are Earth, so it, it makes them relatively bigger beat sticks than they already are. And then Fiendus just does so much work. As far as anything else in the extra deck, you don't really need anything else. I mean, you can put in like five more cards that you think would be beneficial in this deck, but personally, you don't really need to. You could just put like Winter Cherry targets inside uh, cherries in your side deck and then play a bit competitively with it. That's kind of what I would do. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck. I'm sorry that I didn't get to making a video this week with this um, actual Dueling Nexus servers being down a lot. I wasn't able to really play on it much or do a lot with it. Also, uh, League of Legends did just update and put out the new rune system in the game, so I've been playing around with that and trying to learn that too. So thank you guys for watching. Remember to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later in the next video.